all different, all patterns. Got it. Okay, so I hope that answered the question about the chain two. That's why you have to be very careful about your stitch count. So we did the, that was row three, right? Um, which row was I on? I did 30 and then I did my slip stitches. Set up row one, row two, that was row three. Okay, right, so we did working slip stitch in the next five. We just did that, chain two, half double crochet in each stitch across. So I should have 26. One, two, three, four, five. We're just doing the same thing, half double crochets, six in the back loop, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. See, that seems like it's the last one, but I need 26. So don't forget your turning chain. It's, it, it's not um, easy to see all the time. So I'm just gonna make sure I work into that last stitch, which is my turning chain. Okay, and that's gonna be the bottom edge of my hat. This is gonna be the top part of my hat. See what happened here? Because we did those short rows we, with the slip stitches, it's like staggered like this. That's how we're gonna do the shaping. So now this is the last row of the pattern repeat. So once we do this last row, then you're just gonna repeat those um, four rows over and over and over. So I'm gonna show you on this last row, we're gonna work across here and then we're gonna work all the way across here because if we keep doing what we're doing now, we're gonna end up with nothing. So we have to work back and then start at the beginning, okay? So let's do row four, chain two, turn your work. And we're not working into this one because that's our chain two counts as the first half double crochet. We're gonna work into the next stitch and then each stitch across until we get to where our short rows are. So at this point, because we did 26 half double crochets in the last row, we should have 26 half double crochets here before we get to where we do the short row shaping, okay? So, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 22, 23, 24, 25, and then that chain right there is 26. Okay, so now what do I do? That's the end of, sort of the end of this row because here's where we did those slip stitches. So now all we have to do is drop down to this next row and try, try not to do it super loose or you're gonna have like a hole right there. So I'm just gonna yarn over, drop down to this row where there are stitches and work into that first um, slip stitch that we did. So that's 27. And now the next one, which is right here, 28. Here, let me go back because I 
this is where we start. 27, because see this one has a stitch coming out of it. So don't work into that first one. 27, we need 30 here. 28, 29, and 30. So here it's tricky to see where the stitches are. So just make sure you count them and then you should be good. So that's 30. And now we have to drop all the way down to this one. And I think there we should have 34 because we had 34 on row one, right? So I'm at 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34. Here I'm working the half double crochets into the slip stitches. And now we're gonna drop down to this last row and I need 38. And then once we have 38, that's back to where we started with 38 stitches. That's how many we started with. 35, 34, 35, 36, 37, and 38. So here's 35, 36, 37, and 38. See what it looks like now? It's just like a shaped piece. So we made kind of a shape. And this is, short rows are more of a, like an intermediate skill. So if this, like I said, if it's too confusing for you, just work half double crochets in the back loop all the way across. So chain two, half double crochet across, chain two, half double crochet across, chain two, like that. And you can totally make a perfectly good hat like that. Um, but if you want to challenge yourself and do the short rows, we just did all of the rows that it takes to do that. So if you can do what we just did over and over and over, you can do it. So this was our setup row, right? We did the setup row into the chain and then we did row one. This is row two, this is row three, and then we just did row four. So now that we have 38 stitches, we're gonna go back and do row one again. So row one, row two, row three, row four. Row one, row two, row three, row four. One, two, three, four, over and over and over. And until your hat ends up like this. So maybe I can pull this out a little bit so you can see it. See how it's shaped like that? And you're just gonna keep going until the bottom edge where it's straight here. Uh, measures about 19 inches, but you can always, oops, you can always, um, am I still in the right way here? You can always measure it around your head too, to see if you like the fit and you're going to want to give it, have it a little stretch, right? So now all we have to do is take this piece that we made and seam it across. So we're just gonna fold it here, keep this loop on the, the yarn. Did my um, view mess up when I did that? Yeah, um, it looks like it went into portrait. We just need to switch it over to landscape. Okay. Yeah, I can, hopefully I can do that. So that way I can, got it show you how to seam it because I want to show you how to seam it. Try taking your phone off of that and then um, just turning it. I hope I don't. No, it didn't like that. Can you pop me back in? If I, or am I still in? Uh, well, it looks like oh, there, we go. There, okay, we go. there we go. There we go. Okay, so.
There you go. Okay. And hopefully I don't knock myself out again while I put this back. Okay, good. Sorry about that guys, but I'm glad we got it back because I want to show you how to seam this guy together and then we can make a pom-pom. So now you can do seaming a bunch of different ways. I'm just going to show you how to do a slip stitch seam because we've already been doing some slip stitches. So it's pretty simple. Now I can't start from here because I'm right-handed. So I have to start from the right to the left. If you're left-handed, you would go from the left to the right. We always work to the left. So I just grab my loop. This was like the last, um, you know, when I finished my last row, I should have this loop on my hook, right? So I'm just gonna join my two ends together here. So I'm gonna take the piece that's closest to me and join it to the piece that's further from me. Um, stitch by stitch. So here's my first stitch. Now you can go under both loops or you can go under only one. It doesn't matter. So let's just go under both to make it simple. This is kind of like the chain, so it's a little harder. So we're just going to do a slip stitch through both like thicknesses. So we're going to pull that yarn through that first stitch on the other piece and then pull through the loop that's on my hook on the piece that's closest to me. And do that all the way across. So here's the next stitch. I'm gonna go under both loops and I'm gonna go under both loops of this stitch. Pull that yarn through the first one and then pull it through the next one and then pull it through the loop that's on the hook. So if you don't wanna go under both loops to make it look like more of a ribbing, you can go under uh, the loop that's furthest from you and then the loop that's closest to you on the other piece. And that just gives it a little bit of a, more of a ribbed look, right? So I'm going under one loop and one loop and slip stitch one loop and then the corresponding loop on the other piece. And we're just seaming these two pieces together. I like going under, I don't like going under both loops because then you're going under like four and it tends to be kind of thick. So I like this method of going under one loop on the piece that's closest to you and then one loop on the piece that's furthest from you and then just pull through to make the slip stitch. And it's gonna look the same on question. Half double crochet gives you the ribbing. What actually gives you the ribbing is working in the back loop of the stitch. That's what gives you the ribbing. So you can do, um, the only one it doesn't work great with is double crochet because I think they're just too long. But if you do a single crochet through the back loop of every row, you're gonna have a, a smaller ribbing, like a, um, not as tall like this. And if you do half double crochet through the back loop, you're gonna have this, this thicker ribbing, taller ribbing. So what really does it, is the back, working in the back loops. It doesn't really work so much when you work in the front loops. It has kind of a different look. So many, many um, brims of hats or like cuffs of sweaters will have you do this where you're just working um, single crochets or half double crochets through the back loops of the stitches rather than working through both loops. When you work through both loops, you have more of a flat, uh, less textured fabric. Good. Okay. I'm looking at my the transcript and the questions. I want to make sure I'm <laughs> looking at the right thing. Okay, so I'm just slip stitching each one of these across. And this is what you would do if you did the modification, like I was telling you guys, where you don't do the 
the short row shaping, you just work half double crochets in the back loop all the way across. You'll have just like this and you'll do the same thing. You just seam that piece together. It'll just be more like a cowl. So this won't, won't taper in like that because you didn't do the shaping, but it's really gonna be uh, perfectly fine for a hat. If you do it that way, it'll just be like bulky on the top, which is, you know, that's the style, so. Okay, so now I'm up to this, almost up to the top, just working my slip stitches. Try to get these nice and even. You should have the same number of stitches. And it looks like I cut it too short, but that's okay. So you get the idea. So you're just gonna keep doing that. Now see, you can see that it has a seam here. It looks a little different. If you turn it inside out, it looks better, I think. So you just test it and see how you like it. It looks better inside out, I think. So then what you have to do, once you've seamed up the side, we just have to seam the top. And that I'm gonna do with, um, with a yarn needle. So I'm just gonna take a piece of my yarn. And get a good size piece. And I'm just going to sew the top closed. And I'm going to sew right here where I didn't have enough with my tail. When you do it, your yours will it'll still be attached to the um to the yarn ball, so you probably won't run out. But a good uh, rule of thumb is to like, like, let's say you want to seam from here to here. If you, you, if you do like one, two, three, so like measure, depending on what kind of seam you do, because some seams take up more yarn than others. So measure like one, two, three and that should give you a lot and then cut it there that should give you a long enough piece to seam that that together so this is just like sewing we're going to do the same thing that we did i'm going to try to make it similar where i go into one and then go into another and then just work my way up each stitch until I get to the top. And then the top is gonna to be a little less neat because you're kind of just seaming the pieces. So here, see, now make sure you're on the right side because this is the side that I think I yeah, this was a side that I didn't like. So this is gonna be the inside of my hat. And then you can just seam this bit together. So just go back and forth. Make sure you're on the, this is gonna be the inside of our hat, of course. And I'm doing it quick. You can do it a little neater. Take your time with it. But I'm doing it really fast because I want to make a, if we have time to make a quick pom-pom. And if you're doing it without the shaping, you're just going to have to bunch that top together a bit, pull it all together and um, seam the top closed. Okay, that was just a quick, like I said, you're gonna make yours neater. And if you turn it, you've got the top of your hat and you, we can see this on the camera. Okay, so there's the top, looks pretty good, even though I did a quick, super quick seam. And then the bottom, you can roll up like this. So you have the brim, just like in the picture. And then all we have to do is make a little pom-pom for the top. So, 
Here's my hat, looks pretty decent size. I have a pom-pom maker. So it looks like this, you just have to pull these pieces out. These guys pull out like that. And then these guys pull out like that. This is really easy to do. Now, my yarn is getting bunched up here. What you do with all the ends? Oh, the, all the ends you just weave in the way you would um, sew them in. So you take one of these ends, cut it a little shorter, take your needle, and this is true for everything you do. You're gonna always weave, you'll, you'll always have these ends hanging out and you always wanna make sure you weave them in so they don't, uh, so it doesn't unravel. And then you just find like a nice neat on the inside, like a space like that. And you do kind of a little zigzag. So I'm gonna go up and then I'm gonna go down and then I'm gonna go up and down. And see, this is on the inside, so you're not gonna see it. And I'm basically just weaving in that end so that way I can cut it and it doesn't come unravel. Okay, so you're gonna do that with all your ends. Just we that's what weave in ends means. So whenever you see in a pattern weave in ends, just take the needle, weave it through, do a few little zigzags, so that way it doesn't uh, fall out and you cut cut it. Super super simple. So here we're going to start with this little um, maker like this. This doesn't unravel in the wash. No, if you weave in your ends, it won't unravel in the wash. And this yarn is machine washable. So as long as you do that last step of weaving in your ends, don't do knots. Um, some people do knots, but I never do knots because, and if you're like, if it's a sweater, or if it's the inside of your head, you might feel those knots. So you just weave them in. If, as long as you do like maybe five or six zigzags, it'll stay in place. So just take this guy, right? So it's like this. And we're going to start here and we're going to make we're just gonna like loop this yarn around here, okay? And I'm just gonna keep looping it around. Until it's really full. And don't go over these parts, just go on the inside. Oops. This was a piece that I cut, shoot. So this piece should be attached to your ball. Can you do the back piece first? The back piece, this is the whole hat. So how we did it was like one piece. So it wasn't, it was just one piece that we started and we did rows, 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 and then we folded it and seamed it together. And then we seamed the top close. So I'm not sure what uh, the back piece is. Okay, so here's my piece. So I'm just gonna keep doing this till it's nice and as full as you can get it. And then once it's nice and full, my yarn is getting tangled, which always happens. Maybe they are talking about the seam. Yeah, the seam, I just did a slip stitch seam. So it was one piece and I seamed it together to make a tube, right? So I seamed the first row to the last row and it just kind of made a tube. And I just did that with a slip stitch seam. Hope that answers your question. And like I said, if you missed anything, you can rewatch the video. So now, as many times as you want, I'm just gonna pull this guy over here and then take this yarn that's still on there and start, just sort of lay it over and start wrapping this piece. And you're gonna to wanna to put a lot on here. I'm only just putting a little bit because 
so I can get through each step. So put a bunch on there. Of course, I got a huge tangle here because I was pulling from so many different spots in this yarn. So once you have it all nice and full, then you put it, push it over like that, pull this through, right? And just hold it there. But like I said, you're gonna have a lot more on here. Somebody said the first sample you did, I think is what the question is. This was a little sample that I did. So these are the rows. And then these rows, once you do them over and over and over, you'll have that other sample that I showed you that sort of tapered in at the top. Right, so you're going to turn your work each with each row until you have a big piece. Okay, now once you have like this and you have it all filled up as much as you can, then you can cut this piece and then you just cut these little guys. So cut where you did like the where they're folded over. Cut all the way so there's no yarn. Cut this one. And then the last thing you do is take, and mine is like a very, very sad pom-pom because my yarn was tangled and I didn't have enough in there, but it's, yours is gonna be nice and full. So then you take one long piece and you just put it through the center there and out the back, and then you tie it in a knot. Here you can use a knot for a pump. -pump. Tie it tight so it goes all the way down through the center, and then tie it again to make a knot. And then you can take these pieces off, just sort of unfold them. and open it up so you get your pom-pom out. Right? And there is my sad little pom-pom, but like I said, once you get a lot more yarn in there, um, it's gonna be a nice thick one. And then you can trim it if you have any long ends like that. And then you're gonna take that piece that you made the knot from and just sew it right onto the top, but make a better pom-pom. <laughs> So right onto the top and that's it. That's the whole hat. Okay. So I know that was a lot and I know it was, it was, we had to squeeze it all into a full hour, but hopefully you can watch the, um, the video. So you can watch it over and over to see, you know, just to kind of get the hang of it. Cause it does take some getting used to, but this is a good fun um, project to get you some practice in. And again, the pattern, you should have the pattern. It's also in here in the, um, in the yarn, right on the inside of the flap. And it's also in the chat. So I hope everybody enjoyed this class and I hope to see you next time. I am over at Michael's uh, about once a month to teach another class. So thank you very much for being here with me today. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Thanks everyone.